This is what Islam will do for you. It will rise you up. It will exalt you. That is uh, the first book of Almighty God to you and I today. Look that up. Put that up on high. You have it in the Bible. Rise you up. Put your own top of civilization. Oh, look like many of us want to rise up. Suddenly, we had 600 out here. Tonight, we had uh, get count them by six. This uh, is a proof that uh, the so called the American Negro is dead. <laughs> he don't know his God. He don't know his God. He don't know the devil. He don't know anyone. He has us only to the call of the devil. <laughs> that is uh, something that uh, I hate to tell you, but uh, it stands true. That our people are to the call of the white man. And the white man is the devil. And uh, even they don't want you to call the white man the devil. They are wrong with him so much so that they don't want you to say that he's the devil. <laughs> they want you to uh, leave that all and call him by a good name. So he's killing the them and robbing them, taking them along through the streets in the country, depriving them of uh, freedom, justice, and equality, but yet they love him. I can tell you preach that Negroes are devils and they will laugh on. But if I get up here and preach that white man, then the devil will be angry on. And those who uh, holy will not come back. They won't return. They don't like uh, the vision. Listen to you talk about white people. Going out there talking about white people. White people over that church is an entire whole talking about Negroes all the time. But there's no doubt Negroes who scared to even uh, think about talking about the white man. And no one can even get near to you that uh, is talking about the white man. No, because uh, they are afraid that he may come over and kill you and kill them for listening. No one, uh, the white man thinks that they will even listen to you talk about this. But we are not talking about them. We are only uh, teaching you who they are. Only uh, teaching you who they are. Suddenly, uh, uh, you remember that we taught you this uh, And uh, I want to say to you that this subject uh, that we taught to give to you last Sunday uh, is found in the 37th chapter of Ezekiel. And uh, it begins at the very first word. It reads something like this, He hangs up the Lord for the me. Not the Spirit, he says, but the hand of the Lord for the me. <coughs> this is something kind of, you know, a new. Uh, we uh, recognize the prophet uh, then with them, you know, uh, the uh, true light of it, uh, revelating his God to us when he says that the Spirit of his God is upon him. But when uh, he man says that the hand of his God is upon him, then uh, we have to uh, think uh, twice uh, to know just exactly how to uh, get this together now and find some truth in it. Now, if the hand of God for the first piece is equal uh, right there about 595 BC, then uh, uh, God must have been uh, in prison with these people, right? Now, in the same chapter, he uh, mentions that the spirit of the Lord is upon him, or he was in the spirit of the Lord. But now, as he opened up the chapter, in the first place, he says the hand of the Lord was upon him. I want you to uh, uh, remember that the Bible is written in so many different ways that uh, it takes a place here, or uh, God himself, or uh, he thinks from God, missions are written by God, and uh, has been uh, given the true knowledge of the book by God and not by himself. To uh, tell you just exactly how to understand the book. And this is why I'm here tonight. Because all my God has given to me the understanding of the book, and I can tell you uh, just exactly what is meant here and there according to what is said. I can uh, give to you the true knowledge of it because God has given it to me. 
And uh, you may take what I said to you to any other thing you have to hold your child. Here is your package that you want to and if they dispute it, why, well, then tell them to come to me because I offered $10,000 for anyone that uh, is able to condemn me against my interpretation of the right. Uh, not the uh, interpretation, pardon me, uh, the interpretation that God gives to me, whose proper name is on us. And it tells me out in, in the spirit. It tells me only, and then it tells them out in the spirit, he says, uh, of the Lord, and sets me down in the midst of the battle which was full of us. Now listen. I want you to understand how the piece of part the, uh, uh, the book, or uh, rather what it says in the book. Take it inside the uh, uh, part and try to learn the true meaning of the book. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. Now the hand, he says, of the Lord carried him out in the spirit of the Lord. This sounds like two Lords. Right? Like David talking in the first says he heard the Lord say unto his Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make the, uh, thy hand in your foot to stoop. Now, we must understand uh, this, that the Bible translation, the start of uh, the Christian religion, was not so smart in the day when they translated the Bible. They were so dead upon trying to hide the real truth of the Bible until they got it in that translation. And many things there have to be turned around for your understanding. But now uh, this should read that uh, he was in the spirit of the Lord, and the spirit of the Lord led him out into his bed. That's what that's the way he should read to make sense. Right? I know you're not going to agree with me who are afraid of uh, considering the error that has uh, crept into the Bible by the white man. The white man is the one that translated the Bible. It was not an angel from no spirit heaven. It was nothing in the world but the scholars of England and America who translated the Bible into English. And they were no three left. And caused me to let pass by them roundly about, meaning the boat. He set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of them, and caused me to pass by them roundly about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley, and lo, they were very dry. <coughs> now, if these folks, uh, I will need to uh, listen good at this, if these people were in a vision, the vision uh, cannot be taken as reality. It was not real, but he had a vision uh, of something that was to come. And the vision uh, had such a deep sickness that the scientists put it in the book that uh, we may read and learn what they have learned from the vision. They keep in the vision something uh, like a prophecy uh, that properly will come uh, to pass in the Right? If I'm not right, then tell me, uh, after all, uh, then you get up and write. <coughs> we must remember, uh, by the love brothers, and this is the only thing I want to do here tonight, is to get to heal the time of it. If the battle was full of dry bones, the Bible, or the history of the Bible, don't tell us why these bones were there. Who destroyed those people that caused this particular planet to become full of bones? Huh? Was there a war at the time of time in that planet and many people fell at uh, the edge of the throne or by the edge of the throne? Uh, and uh, that was the cause of all of these bones. Or was there a, uh, a, a, some kind of plan uh, that uh, drove the people together in groups into this planet? Touching the water of something, uh, something of the kind that they found there in this planet. But the Bible don't say anything about the uh, vision referring to a time when that there was such thing that space that caused the people to die in that planet. All Ezekiel said that he uh, thought was that uh, he was full of the Spirit in a vision and the Spirit let him out while he was yet in the vision. 
came to something like a man. And that I was full of trouble. And they were very good. And the Lord said unto uh, Ezekiel, Son of man, can these bones live? He asked Ezekiel a question. Can the bones live? And Ezekiel answered very truthfully and intently. He said, uh, uh, Oh Lord, God, God knows. If they can live, you the one know that. Not Ezekiel. I want you to understand the Bible. Understand the truth of it. And if you preach it, preach it rightfully, follow that the people will know it. This is, this is a valley that uh, Ezekiel is in in the region. Surely the valley did not even exist in Israel. There was no such thing as a valley in Israel at that day and time that was full of dry bones. Then this is a vision, and the vision uh, is uh, referred to in the future to come. And if it's referred to in the future to come, what valley in the future shall we look forward to running into that is full of our own that God will put flesh on the road? I want you to understand, my friend. Let us uh, uh, know uh, the book and understand the book. Now, if the sequel, uh, the sequel refers to something to come, then uh, 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 why did he see uh, the call of his uh, bow uh, being there? He didn't say anything about the call. Right? Oh, praise God. Oh, then make it see the not really bones that he's looking at. They're not like bones. They are just uh, something uh, uh, that we would say that is similar to my own. Something that we can use as a picture of something that uh, is really there. All right. Uh, in, uh, uh, that's the picture under the soul and the exalted uh, thing that is given uh, to Christ coming in the last day. Son of man. Uh, the Jesus refers to the coming of God, uh, Christ in the last days, as the Son of Man. The other God has set Ezekiel under that name. Son of Man, can these bones live? He, uh, according to uh, Jesus Christ, uh, he says that when God comes in the last days, he will resurrect you, right? Uh, the Son of Man will come. And the Son of Man will give life to the dead, right? Then if this is, uh, is the same son that uh, uh, he seeks uh, that God is accessing here under the name or title Ezekiel, and given Ezekiel the title of the son of man, and Jesus coming about 595 years later, if he's referring to the same uh, man that God was referring to, then who is this son of man? Hmm? Is it really Ezekiel the son of man? Is that the same son of man that's going to give uh, life to the dead in the day of resurrection? Why right, then we have uh, uh, these things to put before scholars and scientists for their understanding. Now, let's see, do we need to uh, uh, understand it, or shall we send for one to come here to give us the understanding? First, right, let us uh, listen to what uh, God has revealed to Elijah concerning this same chapter. Then if you need another one, then send for another. <laughs> the son of man, Ezekiel is not saying a man that the Bible nine out of history can declare to be a real prophet of this book. Ezekiel seems to be a boring man, a man uh, that they don't know how to who he is. This man is Ezekiel. The Holy One uh, has uh, something similar to his name in it. And the uh, uh, commentators, uh, they also uh, is guessing whether or not that Ezekiel is real or uh, just the name used for some great man coming in the future. So we uh, here have all of this, they claim, actually was in by Ezekiel. But why did not God say Ezekiel can be bones live? Why did he say, son of man? Oh, praise the Lord. We find that in the first verse of the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, uh, here he mentions uh, uh, God speaking to him again. And again, he says unto me, prophesy upon these bones, and say unto 
unto them. Oh, you dry bones. That means the word of the Lord. If he starts to prophesy and then get sick to the bone, that is not a prophet, right? When he says to the disciple, that means the word of the Lord is live, that is not prophesy. Because that is not something of fugitive that is present in. I want you to understand that as a bit, I know your preacher did not go into this, uh, the details of this. No, because uh, you would uh, understand. But uh, I want to go into the details of it, so that you will always go and you can match. And if anyone says he's not right, bring it to me, and I will prove that he is a liar, and I am right. In the fourth place, remember that uh, for the first time here, Ezekiel is, is told by the third man is told to tell the dragon to hear the word of the Lord. And if they will hear the word of the Lord, they shall live. They go. They send uh, the prophesy of uh, Jesus concerning uh, the resurrection of the dead. It says uh, in uh, his own words. According to the Bible, uh, it says that if, or rather, he shall know the truth. You see? Yes, in the fourth verse of the 37th chapter of Ezekiel, uh, you shall live. And if the truth uh, uh, prophesied by Jesus, which is the cause, he's, he's prophesied. He said, you shall know the truth. Not that you will know it not. He said, I can't tell you. But you shall know the truth. That's the prophet, huh? What? Oh, I can't tell you, but he shall send one. Huh? And when he comes, that prophet, he will lead and guide you in the Lord. What? Oh, I just want you to get, I don't know what I'll just say, that's all. Uh, uh, old slave master's worry. Uh, it's in your head. 
but you are not living. Uh, you don't know, you don't understand yourself. That word that the old slave master put into you drives you out. Uh, America's is to that very difficult thought. And now it's in the uh, uh, state that he was in, Palestine, was not the place. But he saw a future a place, a, a, a country that had people in it, that had become uh, a great problem to, to be the prize of the knowledge of God. And the way of God is the only thing that will give them life. So, uh, this son of man, he thinks that he's not going to do a prophet by the Lord. He only called a human. He never did do anything of the God. Remember that. He got born in David, and he was in the day. But I just imagine that he called Kennedy to watch the son of man and not be him. Oh, thank you, Peter. And he heard the Lord talking to that man. And so it was he in God. Oh, praise the Lord. He said, I will bring things upon you and will bring you with others. Right upon you, cover you with skin, put back in you, and you shall live. And he shall know that I am the Lord. But all the people who die to uh, uh, they understand what the Lord Take over that. They had what lived in nothing if they were dead. But naturally, since they died, they have forgotten who was the Lord. Right? As you have here on earth. You have been here 400 years, and you don't know who is God. So I said, you said, look up, you look up. He's up there, yes, God. And you believe it. But yes, you don't see a thing in the world but the sun will be stopped. Right? But the way that he's up there, and you will come in with each other, that he's up there. But no proof that he's up there. What proof do you have? Now, you know, if a white man said, if he was up there, if a white man had told you while you were there, while you were there, that he's under your foot in the world, you would be all there looking at him and saying, you know, I'm not, 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 I'm so it would have been better if he had said that he was under your foot in the earth than if he did in the face. Because under your foot is right. Out of the earth we all came. He didn't do nothing in the nation. And if he had said he was in the earth, then we'd have all right there. He's like us. We all are out of there. Huh? But he's written in the face. Why not let you know he wouldn't see nothing but stars and moon, and someday you hope that you will grow up there. And it was a while to bring it to God. Huh? You said you cannot live up there. And you said, well, I don't know where you're saying live. So why do you want to talk that Because he said he was up there. Yeah, and we'll soon see you come down if you try to go up. Let's move on and get rid of this subject. That's the time is done. Is, uh, so in this text for it, let's see what the text for it, the text of 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 the and the text of 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 the text the 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 Are in the 
Now in the day, the black man, the brown man, the yellow man, the red man of you, today, all are talking about getting the far the book of all Negro. Right? All praise to the Lord. Tell us the other word of the Lord, and they shall live. All praise to the It's a great army that my dying people, that my mighty people, they have just fallen asleep. They are dead by the touch of a enemy. If you give them my word, fellow man, they say, they say, I will uh, put my spirit into them. But I put my spirit into them, they shall live. Oh, praise this good brother. I want you to remember these things. Let's look at what he has to say <coughs> here in the uh, book. Therefore, prophesy, say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, all my people, the bones thou hast become people. Right? All my people, I'll open your grave. Not this grave and not about it. Uh, you must watch the uh, Bible, the uh, uh, reading to understand it, and be careful. This was a vision. In the sight of the vision, it was about it. And the people were found. Uh, here, uh, 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 for their own division, now they become people and they are in a place. And the way of the Lord is to bring them out of their place. Uh, not out of the valley, but out of their place. All places they see God. I will bring you up upon me. He said, I will open your grave. Listen, that's this good. That's this one. And cause you to come up out of your grave. And bring you into the land of Israel. How could Israel now, uh, if this was the whole house of Israel, that was born, then where were these bones that they had to go back to the land of Israel? Huh? Then these bones did not fall dead in the land of Israel. Huh? These are the, uh, the facts that you must dig into the time of the book of the Lord. That's exactly where the place is to come. Hmm? It is right if you understand. But this uh, Israel should not have been here. It should have been the land of the black man, no people, because it's you that the book is referring to. I will bring you into your own land. You must remember that Moses in the Exodus carried Israel to the promised land. And how can he seek on uh, tell us that he has to resurrect Israel again and take them into the land of Israel? Huh? Then something is wrong, right? Oh, praise this to God. But he thinks of this, yes, uh, 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 that the word of the Lord said that he will bring them into that own land. We know that we are not in our own land. We know that our father was brought over here by the white man 405 years ago. We know that the, the day that we actually came from Africa, right? I was in Africa in December. And the Sudanese in Africa uh, were telling me all the time I was there, come home, tell them to come home. And they looked just like you and I. And that... Uh, I will uh, doubt uh, that Ezekiel is referring to you and I as the land is the land of Africa, not the land of Israel. Israel has no land. Now, where uh, can we go uh, into the land of Israel? Because look, Israel is a bankable. She has no land. She's trying to fight and claim someone else for it, right? Well, then, what uh, Ezekiel means here is a land where it is independent. Well, if Israel has no independence, she has no land, she has no land today. All praise is due to Allah. She's standing before the God to be a uh, grown of the uh, uh, land that he's trying to claim that is her. She never owned that land. It never was her, her land. Yeah, uh, Abraham, look this way and that way. I will give to thy seed all that you see. And they shall uh, embrace them, uh, brother, I will embrace them what to find them uh, in number, as this hour, and 
have to end on the picture. And I will give them this place where you and I stand and everywhere and as far as you can see. Meaning, I will give them the whole earth. Right? If this man uh, was standing in uh, what they call in those days, Mesopotamia, all right, as we call it Turkey, uh, something like that today, then all right, then if this man could look east, west, north, and south, and God said to him that he will give to his feet every uh, thing that he seeks. Whether it was east, west, north, and south, this means that after they have started the enemy for 400 years, he would judge the enemy, destroy the enemy, and kill Abraham's feet. The after of the earth. That's what he meant. Oh, praise the to God. And you are the Abraham feet that he referred to. Not the Jews. And the 13th verse, thank God. And the 13th verse, he shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your grave, O oh my people, and brought you up out of your grave. And I will put my spirit in you, and he shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. He keeps putting emphasis upon putting this Bible in its own land, right? Now the Bible has to tell people, and God is reminding them still as being out of their land, and that His Word will unite them, and His Word will guide them, and His Word will establish them in their own land. Right? All oh, praise to this truth, God. And, and this says, you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it. I have performed this, says the Lord. I have spoken it, uh, uh, I have the Lord spoken it. He has spoken it through the mouth of the prophet, through the mouth of Abraham, that after they have fulfilled into a strange land, and have suffered, healed in treatment by the enemy for 400 years, I will judge that uh, nation, and I will bring the end God's feet. Right? All oh, praise is to Allah. Wake up, then, O oh, blind, deaf, and dumb, black man of America, and know that you are the one in prophecy. That the book is reported. It is today that you must return to your people. It is today that you must be united. You must walk hand in hand with the black man of Asia. For you are their God and their people. But you must know this that you cannot uh, come into the unity of that people of yours in Asia until you have the truth. The word of Almighty God, Allah, must be preached to you, and you must believe it, you must accept it, and uh, you must also go back into the name of your own nation, the word that you can join hand again with your own people. I know I have just stopped there about four or five months ago. I know these things to be the truth. When I get to uh, the, uh, uh, the Asian world, the Muslim world, uh, goes back here and out of the you put He put in the paper, and it was put in the paper, telling you how eager the white man is, is to keep you in the same and to represent you as one of your family, so that you will not be uh, recognized by your people over there. All right. Over there, I was recognized and was taken in the oil, hurt and sick, when I told them that I was Elijah Wild. My father was the name that made them embrace me. They sit down on the sand by their hundreds and listen to me talk with them. Several thousand then cotton to them sit down on the ground. Listen to me. Hundreds of me off the ground. Hi, long live Elijah Muhammad. In Bennett, Arabia, we sit down in the garden. 
we had uh, 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 a meal, or rather uh, a dinner out there in the garden that morning. And the garden uh, had a lot of little crops, uh, uh, rather split wise, uh, through the garden with little small streams of water. And they have electric lights all around on the uh, banks of the, these little streams. And the light of up at night is one of the most beautiful effects of the all. So I did like the, the sight of one of these little uh, streams of water uh, at the uh, head of the table, side of the table, with another eye mail from Syria. And, uh, pardon me, with an eye mail from Syria. I, I, I use that word, I never make you think I'm an eye mail. I'm not uh, representing myself that right. No, we sit there and we dine and we discuss the Holy Quran and the Bible's prophecy. There were about 18 or 20 of us all over with scholars except three new uh, reports of uh, their papers. Now, I want you to know this, my friend, that uh, these people are prepared to receive you today. They can take you into that country and not even know that you ever uh, was there. The country is at large. There's plenty of Asia. Plenty of Asia are over there. And they all want to receive. They said they will sleep on the ground and get you there. Think over there. Rain, terror, people, I'll offer a palace that is all ready. And then they said to me, you don't like this one? We will build you a new one. Think over there. You don't believe on what I said, go ask them. I will take you away if you want to go over there. Just to go away five or six hundred dollars just for you to see for yourself. They will not do that if you are a Muslim. We want to uh, uh, remember tonight, and my conclusion, that the tribal of Ezekiel was a future mentally dead people that uh, must receive the truth that they may live and unite all to their own kind, and this people are dead out of their own country. And they must be returned to their own people and to their own land. And God Almighty kills us by the hands of a prophet or messenger will do this job in the last day. I thank you, my beloved brothers and sisters, for listening to this subject tonight. And may the God of truth be as ever your guide into the knowledge of the truth. It is you, you are the one that uh, needs the word of the Lord that you may live. It is this room that brings literally death to life. So I thank you and all that is this to this subject in uh, Chicago and Detroit. I uh, thank you for this. And at this time, I want to say, my beloved brothers and sisters, that this is all for tonight. And if there's anyone of you have any questions, you may ask me after uh, this meeting, or rather this uh, subject, which is now coming to a close, that I believe you understand. So. Well, that Ezekiel was not seeing anything in reality, but he saw the picture or the physical condition of a people that was in the future to come. And these people were killed out of their country, mentally. And what caused that death being deprived of the truth? And the truth, when it comes to them, it returns them. Brought them in unity with each other and the uh, truth united them onto their own Christ and brought them into their own uh, people and their own land. This is all that the vision means. 
There is you in the vision. You are the five homes of Ezekiel and the valley is America. And you must receive life and get up out of America and return to your own home. That's all it means. You are the one. Mentally dead. You're dead here. That's all. And I believe you will uh, live if you hear the truth. And believe the truth. You will live. You will even go back to your people and you can't help but to go back to them if the uh, Almighty God has said to his prophet that he will return you, he's going to return you. He will force you to return you. He's not going to lie. And he said uh, to uh, Moses, I will uh, bring them out of Egypt and I will give to them that land that is born with milk and honey. But they refused, they rebelled against Moses and against the word of God until God started whipping the Egyptians. When he started whipping the Egyptians with flesh, depriving the Hebrews of the opportunity to live in peace. <laughs> and when they, in Egypt, they began to look at Moses and saying to Moses, we will follow, we will follow, wherever you lead us. When Moses told them to get up, Tonight is buckle on your shoes and boots and take what bread you have, put it in a bag and get out of here. But tomorrow the Lord will pass over you and he's going to kill somebody. <laughs> they didn't know the with him. <laughs> they have seen enough <laughs> to believe that he will accept what he said. They had saw already nine places. They were tired of looking at these places. They didn't want no death on them. So they got out. The thing will go with the American so-called Negro. He will not leave the white man until he speaks with them. Take the preacher here, the worst enemy of his people, and don't know him. He's preaching all the time to his people to be a slave to the white man and don't know him. Everything that he's saying is of his service. I can sum it up to you and prove to you it will lead you right back into the slavery of the white man. But he don't know that. And he's too proud to come here and sit down like you and try and learn the truth. Because he don't think that I know the truth. He thinks that I'm a fool. But sometimes when you think the other fellow is a fool, you are a fool yourself. And that's why you can't see the wisdom of the other. Because of uh, uh, your own foolishness. My beloved brethren, this is the thing that I if the Pharisees had went to meet the Jesus that was being born, or had been born, in the uh, uh, ox stall of uh, Jesus' uh, grandfather, that was his grandfather whose ox stall that he was in. That was Mary's father's uh, stall. And she was hiding in her own father's stall from the hands of the uh, Herod men who had taken a husband and known that she was pregnant and had, had came to kill her because uh, the law there at that time, and it still was there, that if you got pregnant, out of wedlock, they would kill her. So they knew she was there. But uh, when, she, uh, uh, when they came, and so Mary, her uh, father, uh, where was she? She said, that woman was a woman that my love of God that was distant from Egypt. And she has rejoined the Egypt. Don't worry, it's not yet. Why? Right. Because Mary did it. Uh, uh, so did she. That's what she said to, with her young child. It's easy. Right? So he was not right. But he knew what they were going to do. And he knew he was the father. And according to the law of the Bible, and the Holy Spirit concerning a girl pregnant out of wedlock, that the father should heal her. It's like getting no body. And also, in the only one, the Lord is the thing. And those things, and it's that will be the heart of the uh, Islamic world. If you are not pregnant out of wedlock, your brother or your father wants that to take you out from the uh, device and lead you around out of uh, the civilization and kill you. But uh, they don't have fun on the brains of the Muslim world. They found in Africa and, uh, with all the brains of the Muslim world. And so far, and here in uh, Palestine, 
and Egypt, that is, that law is uh, not carried into practice anymore. They get away uh, without that, they go through court. All right, that don't happen so often, even in Egypt. There is seldom anything like that happen. We were there too, and uh, uh, I saw, and I talked with the, I lived in Arkansas, and uh, I had uh, tea and coffee with them, and uh, that can't go out with them. And uh, in America, you live in hell. This is our hell country. And the chief devil, our hell lives here. That's the white man. He is the boss. And his law is to all the evil you want. And if you do good, I will put you in jail. That's right. Try to be a good one, and pretty soon they have a charge against you. And you go going to jail. That's right. But, so here, you can do anything. He will license you to do anything. That's right. You see witchcraft being like Terrible of life. More of life. And anybody that wants to do evil can get life to do it. Right? Certainly. But if you want to do good, go sir. Go sir, you don't get no life. Suppose I had went to the city hall or to uh, uh, Washington, asked in Washington to, to give me a permit to preach this love to God people here and tell them that God has appeared to me. And God has said to me that you are the blue eyed self. And that uh, our people are the righteous people, and you have formed them and called them to do all types of evil. Now, God has come for this. All right, he would have told me, he said, niggas, get out of here before we get it. Uh, you're crazy. Go put him in the crazy house. That's right. But uh, uh, I am too smart for that. I am too crazy for it. I won't ask him nothing. I just go and say, I am preaching this love. Come here and listen to that. I will find a temple and preach this love. Now, Friday night, what uh, we want for Friday night. This is only the spice of your Bible. Now, what do we want the Lord of some other Bible take Friday night? The real truth of it. Who will give me a subject for Friday night? Yes, sir. Almighty God, 
You have it here in the Old Testament. He says that those that would not tell Moses, he, he has said to them, he ate this one. And that's what happened to them. And the white man knows that they are the one. They know that they are the eighth man. Why they uh, uh, become as eight? Almighty God, Allah said to me that after they were exiled out of the uh, Holy Land 6,000 years ago, finding themselves uh, unable to get back through the source of uh, the people that you call church today, they stood as a guard uh, between Europe and Asia. And uh, you have them in the Bible under uh, uh, the Tower of Angels. An angel got placed in the east gate with a soul in his hand, which turns east, west, north, and south. This is church. Church. The, and the church people, they wasn't called church at that time. They were the ones to keep the white man back into the hills of Europe. And every time they found one trying to cross the border, they cut him down with the sword. And uh, that's the angel that kept the way of the east in those days. And uh, if you read the history of uh, church, it goes right back to that, to that time of that water of the white men. And there have ever been a, a, a people that hated the white men. Yeah, recently, uh, recent years, it looks like church is a little soft. We spent a few days in Turkey in the, the last of November last year. Uh, between the 20th and the 30th of November, we were there in Turkey. Uh, uh, went all over the old city that they used to, that used to be the chapel of Turkey. They used to call it Constantinople. Now, this uh, uh, people are still Muslims that today, they supposed to me that they do the Muslim. I said, yes, I still love religion. They were sick men. And they were so happy to know that I was a Muslim. They we are Muslim. We are Muslim. We are so glad to have you to visit us. They real, uh, they real the haters of the second people. So they have been uh, kindly, uh, I mean, the haters of the white people, pardon me. But they have been softened up a little by their leaders. And rulers here yeah, of recent years, since 1950. After Germany attacked Russia and pushed them back across that little street there, they called the Bosporus. Now, after they did that, then uh, the uh, elected bill president, the Falcon no more rule. But as long as the Falcon rule, he have a strict law against the Christian. Right? Read the Israel. And that was, uh, that meant for Christian Europe. But still I say that there are no such thing as a uh, playboy that today. They still are whispering what they will do when the uh, declaration of the whole law comes. Uh, they will do this, they will do that against the Christians. They are still leaders of the white Europeans. But although they look white, but still they don't classify themselves as uh, the brother of the white Europeans. And, uh, and uh, back when the, our father was born here, put into slavery three, four hundred years ago, and that three hundred years that they served as servitude slaves, they taught our people everything against themselves. They called them every time of dirty names, and they blew it up in the children's heart. The black children thought they were really what the white man said they were. As you can bring up a wild element or any kind of wild thing, trade it to answer to your name. If your name is Willie, you can go out there and get your mule or horse and start calling him Willie, and he will come to you. Or you can get your dog or cat, or you can get the rabbit, anything out there, and train it to follow you and call it by your name, and it will come to you. So it was with our people. The white man had it us here so long. He trained us to do whatever he said and answer to whatever he called us. And uh, during those three centuries, you must remember, three hundred years is a long time. He dumped our people so down 
that he could say right before their face, right to them, that you, uh, uh, what is you came from the monkey, hey, that ugly looking thing, and all like that, and they believe. They look at the ugly monkey's face and the ugly baboon's face, and they say, maybe we need to live from them. That's right. Because he had made them look ugly like that. But I want to show you that, uh, uh, that you are not from that people. The day you see the people that you are from, it's Africa. You see those people, they all look like you, and you look like them. That's the people you are from. This black, mild, muggiest, has the uh, nasty characteristics of the muggiest. It's similar to who he's from, and that's the white man. They have thin lips, is that right? Look at them straight in the face. Go out to the zoo tomorrow. Sit down there and just stare at the monkey. Watch them and then look up at the white man. Take an old white man and an old white woman and put them there beside the cage and look at each other's face. Uh, And if you all agree with me that these are the two that favor, not us. They don't favor the Negro, they favor white people. <laughs> and if I have lied to you that the white man, uh, at a distant level, is not the monkey, I will hang for it tonight, and I'll tell anyone of his righteousness to try to disprove it. And they uh, lost civilization, and they uh, had nothing to wear, 
they start killing animals, taking their hide, putting on their cocoon. And uh, finally they got so far uh, into savagery until uh, when they birthed a cow, they didn't teach the cow to stand up and walk. And the cow, when they start going, he takes down there on the ground crawl. And uh, this started them to crawl on the ball, all holes, and they used to climb trees at, at day and night, and they learned to jump from lift and let running from the wild beast in the hills and cave sides of Europe. This went on until the first of Moses. And when he was born, he was next to these people. That's the people that Moses civilized, put on the road to conquest like 4,000 years ago. The white man's actual history of civilization began 4,000 years ago and not 6,000 years ago. And uh, they will value family witness that he was the truth, and Moses was that first prophet that they had, and they called Moses that he met the picture. Is that right? All right, he did uh, deliver them from uh, savage. This Moses that you have here in the Bible, uh, that is working in Egypt, is a symbolic man like the Egyptians themselves, you go there, they don't know nothing about the ever had any army of people going across those red seas and walking across all those tribes, because they don't know nothing about them. But it is here in the book. If you understand that it, it means good. The red sea don't mean water. There's no water in the red. No, no, the red sea is not water when it's understood. That's a people. Yeah, that's what it is. And going across this uh them. Uh, that these of people or that race of people on dry shot, the dry shot means uh, you're getting through them uh, and out of them in a beat. You uh, are going out of the people but without being attacked. That like you go across a sea of water without being drunk. And the red city is the Caucasian city. He is the one. The same one mentioned as being read in the Revelation as the red dragon. You are to be delivered out of it as out of them without <laughs> any of them making an attack on you when you're going out. As the uh, book teaches you, it says to go out and not a dog shall move his tongue. The dog that shall not move his tongue is the, uh, the nation. He is the dog that shall not move his tongue. He will not uh, prevent you from uh, going back to your people. And he, the day, wants you to go back, but he's skeptic, can you so? He, he's afraid you might wake up, you might be united, and you might think this, that we ought to get even for wisdom in way for what he did to us, you know. Look what this man done to us, so for all he did, let's get even with it before we go. And he knows that you will get the upper hand, because you're in his house. You're not out of his house, you don't have to come to him. You are already in his house. And that you could put up a mighty fight with a man in his house. Because the man has used the weapons on you that he could if you were coming to him. They could right in his house, he can't throw his house apart, so he would kill him back. So he has to fight uh, with you with oil that he can uh, use nearby, you know, without destroying his house. He can't use a gun in front on you. He can't set no line for you because you are not a people coming in. For the people already. So this is the thing that they said. They said, don't want no such thing as a Negro rebellion in America. And he thinks the truth will cause that. Therefore, he don't want why they're teaching you the truth. He don't want you coming here to listen to the truth. He's doing everything to keep you away from this place by telling you that life is crazy or that you will probably run into uh, trouble by going there and listen to him. That uh, uh, they will not uh, recognize you and will uh, lay you off the job as though that these are not working too right here. Oh, these are believers. They have a job. But he will tell you, you might lose your job. But one of these may be working right over the same job with you. He's not laying that one off. But this is all fear he wants to put in. I have defied him to uh, 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 defy my followers of a job. In Washington, no. The first place of May last year, right there in Washington, I told them to go ahead and uh, <clears throat> not feed my followers if they wanted to, don't give them a job, and if 
my father would come to me, I would give them a permanent job because they only have a temporary job uh, at that with them. And that if you want to uh, deprive them of house to live in, go ahead, put them out, see how long you will see it. I told the government that, and I was telling the government that today, tomorrow, and the next day. They can't touch Elijah and his followers. Uh, as the power that I need not only to put my followers in hope, but to give them what they want of the earth, even if it's right.
90 percent of our people don't know what that even means. All they think they about that the white man going to treat us loose that. The hell with this treating you loose that. The thing you want to do is don't settle for your brother. Stop the uh, taking temporary little kindness from people set upon your own destruction. What you need, you need a country as any other nation. You need some of this earth that you can call your own. This is the purpose of this teaching, and the coming of God is to give you some earth that you can call your own. When God went to Egypt, according to your Bible, this purpose was to give the Hebrews a country to themselves. It is the same purpose today. Because that I represent to you is uh, this purpose is to give to you a country that you can call your own if he has to kill all the people all in that country to give it to you. Like he did Israel. So there's a plenty of people today that don't believe in Allah, so why leave them walking around proud? Kill them and uh, if you just and if you don't believe in us, Allah, I'll beat you for about 40 years and you will believe. Okay. All I have to tell you, just beat you. You will suffer. That's the prediction. So I thank you, my beloved brothers and sisters. I'm your good old brother and uh, brother that will die for you, whether you will die for me or not. I don't think you will because you don't understand about me. But I will give my life any time for you. I don't go around with the pocket full of oil. I don't allow any guys that what besides me with Sarah. Our only have with the power of God. And the power of God is my defense. And you have never seen a little man or big man of your side in your midst. And you have never seen a little man or a big man of your side in your midst. That to do this and say things that I am saying in joy and that we with it without fault. Can't do it with all that goes with what I'm teaching you and what I'm trying to do. And uh, you will value it. That if I'm not from God, I'm from a more powerful devil than the one that you will. Thank you, Messenger Elijah Muhammad. You have just heard the message of truth from the Messenger of Allah, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Continue to make these lectures possible by sending your support to Messenger Elijah Muhammad, Propagation Society, 5025 North Central Avenue, number 4-4.